Welcome to our fireside chat, managing mobile releases. I'm Allison and I'm a product marketing manager here at LaunchDarkly and today I'm joined by Alex from Autodesk. So Alex, why don't we dive right on in and why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and what you do at Autodesk? Thank you for having me today. Uh, I manage the developer platform services team at Autodesk and we deliver products and services that help developers be more productive. Autodesk is a global leader in 3D design engineering and entertainment software. Uh, if you don't know Autodesk software uh, specifically, you, you certainly have seen things that our customers have built. Uh, these chairs, these microphones, these cameras, they were probably all designed or built using Autodesk software. Uh, and our customers are in every corner of the world using our products on their mobile, on web, on their desktops. Um, essentially pretty much doing, making, making the world we live in today. Super cool. I think that gives you a, like a really unique perspective, just like how all the teams at Autodesk are leveraging a tool like LaunchDarkly. And I know you mentioned that you were around back when Autodesk first started looking at a tool like LaunchDarkly. Can you tell me a little bit about like what spurred on that process and what did that journey look like? So back in the day when, when we started looking at uh, feature flag tools, one of our architects was tasked to, to look into it to help us uh, improve our release processes. And he looked at four or five different tools back then and decided on launch darkly for, for the feature flag uh, product. Awesome. I mean, obviously we love that and that's why we're talking a bit today, but can you talk to us a little bit about what did a release look like prior to launch darkly and what does it look like now that you guys are using launch darkly? Back when he was looking into it, releases were really, really hard. It took, it were, they were done every six weeks. Uh, it took a full customer outage to do a release, multiple hours, multiple teams had to come in. Uh, we had a very complicated QA process to, to do a release. And then afterwards, uh, as we started improving our processes and using feature flags, releasing became a lot smoother, a lot easier to handle. We decoupled feature releases from essentially the, the process of doing a push to production or, a, or an application release. Today, we're talking about mobile. So can you talk me through a little bit, what did a mobile release look like at Autodesk and how has that process shifted now that you guys have launched Darkly? We've, we've decoupled the concept of a release from a, a, the, couple, the concept of a feature release from an application release. So you can take an application to the app store, but not necessarily release features to your customers. You can leverage real customers to do testing for that, that application with flags and, and enable those features over time. You can also make decisions where you say, I don't want to release this feature because I found a problem or I found an issue and I want to wait a little bit longer until I can solidify this process. Maybe give us a little bit of an example of what it looked like before LaunchDarkly and, and now what does that release process look like? So back when we started the, our LaunchDarkly journey, uh, releases were really costly for us. Um, they usually took a downtime from our customers. Uh, we took multiple teams getting together on, over a weekend uh, for like an 8 to 12 hour process to do a really, really complicated release. And we used to do those every six weeks, maybe every two months. Um, so it was really hard to get features in, in our customers' hands. Uh, and, and sometimes you find a problem right after that release or in, in that release process you find an issue so you have to postpone a release. It's a really, really costly process. Um, so besides, of course, doing a ton of other engineering work to make our application and our release processes better, we started introducing feature flags to that process. And feature flags allow us to decouple the software release, pushing a software to production, releasing it on an app store or, or making it uh, available to our users to download from actually releasing a feature to the user, turning it on. Uh, and that decoupling is really, really important because it allows us to actually do proper testing, validation, and, and essentially make decisions that reduce the impact to our end users uh, if, if we find an issue or if an, a feature is not necessarily ready to, for prime time yet. That makes sense. So if I'm hearing you correctly, before launch Darkly, a release would go out to a mobile app and those features would be on users' phones and devices. But now you have launched Darkly, so you're releasing that code, it's going through the App Store approval process, but 
once it actually gets approved, those features aren't necessarily showing up on mobile devices until you guys actually go and turn them on. Yes, absolutely. Um, so the, the fact that you download an application in the App Store and you actually turn it on doesn't necessarily give you all the features that are in that application at that time. Uh, we can essentially selectively turn them on over time to reduce the risk and, and also to, to provide a better experience to our end users. Can you talk to us a little bit about what those like pain points looked like for your mobile development teams and like how they're overcoming getting through the App Store and getting those features into the hands of their users faster now with LaunchDarkly? The App Store is, makes, makes our life really complicated, right? There's uh, a review process that we don't control. Uh, and besides that, there's a large variation of devices out in the market. So we've tried to decouple the release of an application from the release of features. And what that allows us to do is that allows us to release an application on a cadence, maybe weekly, maybe biweekly, to our customers, and then so progressively do testing. We can test for ourselves. We can test with our QA team. We can test in real live customers. We, we have betas. We have other processes for testing. And that allows us to assess the quality of, an, of a release before we actually uh, turn on the release for all customers using the platform. So what I'm hearing you say is you can now with LaunchDarkly release features in real time because your code's already in your mobile app. It's just a matter of toggling those features on when they're ready, when they've been tested for your end users. Is that correct? It's absolutely. It, it's primarily a way to reduce our risk and understand the impact that a feature release is going to have to our end users. And that's not just going forward, but it allows us also to go back. So if you release a feature or if you find a problem during testing, you can withhold that feature from the customers and actually reduce your risk, mitigate that without having to incur into a complicated or, or a, a rollback or a very complicated release process all over again. I want to dive into that a little bit. Like you just said, prior to launch Starkly, what did that look like? What happened if even after all the great QA testing, a bug still snuck through and was impacting your mobile apps? What did it look like to try and get that bug taken back and not impacting users anymore? So back in the day, you had to roll back. You had to go back to a previous version of your application. And even that is risky. So if you're doing a coordinated release with multiple applications and services, you may not be able to have a clean rollback. You may have to roll back more than just your app. You may have to roll back services and other things. So doing a rollback or, or doing a large feature development all at once is really risky. And that's what feature flags allow you to do. They allow you to decouple the large application release from the feature release, and they allow you to, to be nimble just like the Dora says, it's like do small feature developments one piece at a time and then release those features one at a time. And if you find an issue, roll them back one feature at a time, not a whole application, not a whole development cycle. And with mobile apps, we know that there is the App Store. So if you push out a version and there is a bug that's impacting end users within that version, you have to roll that full version back with the App Store instead of just toggling off the one feature that maybe has the bug in it or only toggling it off for specific users that are impacted by that bug. Do you have any examples at Autodesk where you've been able to do that? We actively use feature flags for, for that. Right, and not, not just for, for mobile, but also in the whole ecosystem, mobile, web, or services, right? One of our teams call it a kill switch, essentially. So you have a bad feature, you have a problem, you can turn it off, right? You have an incident in one of the services in, in production, you can turn off a mobile feature that was leveraging that service so that you reduce the impact to the end user. And you can turn it back on either when you're comfortable, either when you make a fix or when you when you make uh, when the incident is resolved. So it allows you that flexibility of choosing when you want to, to turn things on or off the entire stack from, from mobile web and service. Uh, and it's really, really useful, right? Mm -hmm. you, can, you can greatly reduce the impact to end users of any problems that you may have. I want to dive into kind of what you're talking a little bit right now with the full stack of Autodesk. Obviously, you guys have web applications along with mobile applications. How do you guys think about wanting to release a feature on both your web and your mobile at the same time? What does that look like at Autodesk? 
so of course teams have to to work together. They have to coordinate those releases. Um, the other thing that's also important is that any release should be forward and backwards compatible, which allows you to turn on features and flags mm -hmm. at, at any time. Uh, but primarily, that's that's how teams would work together. Is they would probably release a backend feature, turn on, and then mobile will turn on their feature uh, in sequence, and then they would make be able to so progressively release that to end users. Very cool. Can you tell us a little bit about maybe some of the unique use cases that Autodesk is using LaunchDarkly for? We use FeatureFlex to enable banners, notifications, whole application behavior. For instance, if you have a, pro a problem in our cloud services, you can turn on an application, a feature flag to make an application go offline mode, asynchronous. Uh, you can turn on a whole set of features or things. So I would call these operational flags that would allow us to, to essentially help mitigate the impact of a cloud outage or a cloud incident into, into the customer's uh, mobile or web applications. So those are pretty neat features that we've, we've been leveraging. And it sounds like really focused on just making sure that customer experience is really rock solid, that you guys are communicating with your customers when they need to be communicated with using LaunchDarkly. Absolutely. This is, this is all about minimizing impact to customers or, or the other way around, delivery higher quality features uh, faster to end users. Can you talk to us a little bit about how you're using LaunchDarkly to do progressive rollouts and using that to make sure you're getting great features into the hands of users quicker? Using targeting, you can essentially set up your QA team as, as one of the target users that essentially can test a feature early on. And then you can selectively roll it out to beta users or roll it out by sort of a canary progressive release where you roll out to a percentage of users. You can choose to roll out based on geography or any other targets. Uh, and you can do that. that. That allows us to minimize the risk. So as you roll out, a portion of the, the application, you can then validate what's the user impact, what is your analytics showing, what's your monitoring showing, and you can make decisions to continue going forward or stop that rollout and roll back essentially and keep the application and make a decision for the next release. I want to step back a, a second because you mentioned at the beginning that you were around when LaunchDarkly first started getting implemented at Autodesk. And I know some of our users might be in that same space where they're just starting to adopt LaunchDarkly. I'm curious, do you have any advice for them on what to do or learnings that you might have had? So we're, we're a large enterprise. We have a couple hundred users on LaunchDarkly. We have dozens of, of products and services running. Uh, so we, we decided to take a very well-structured approach to how we rolled out LaunchDarkly. We created best practices and we created a, a complete organizational structure within LaunchDarkly so that a user only has access to the flags from their team um, and, and they cannot essentially step on each other's toes at any point in time. So that was, that was something we took a little bit of time to create that organizational model, uh, but it was really good because we started LaunchDarkly with probably 100 users and we're way beyond that number today. And we didn't have to make any changes to our organizational processes. Uh, but setting up those best practices, helping customers understand, customers, sorry, helping developers understand what is, what is the usage of the tool, what should they do, how we want them to use it is really, really important. And I know you mentioned that you know Autodesk has had acquisitions and teams have had come come in using homegrown feature flagging solutions or just other solutions in general, and they've switched over to LaunchDarkly. Can you talk to us a bit about why they made that switch to LaunchDarkly and how they worked with you to get going on that? So when when we have acquisitions come into the company, we we essentially evaluate their tech stack and. If they were not using LaunchDarkly for feature flags, we will essentially migrate their process to our process uh, and onebar them into the system and, and essentially move them over. Uh, but so far, uh, everybody who's who's been in acquisition has been, had a positive experience moving to LaunchDarkly. To wrap us up today, what do you hope the audience can walk away with based on this conversation? Look at the value of the feature, right? Understand what the features are for. Spend a little bit of time understanding how you want this, this application to be available for your end users, for, for your company, how you want to target, how do you want to set up uh, 
all the features, the, the pieces of it. Uh, and then you can roll it out uh, over time and you will see the benefits of having that, a little bit of that uh, organizational structure, a little bit of that, uh, that design will pay off in the future. Thank you so much for joining us today, Alex. It was a really great conversation to get to hear about how you guys are using LaunchDarkly at Autodesk. And thank you to our audience for tuning in, but stick around because we've still got some great sessions for our mobile release summit. <laughs>